Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for July 27th, 2022, around 1140 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including more tropical cyclones in the East Pacific Basin and exactly which United States states are getting ready to be impacted by hurricanes this year. So let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that it's not really busy out across the basin today. We noticed that we do have a few tropical waves that are emerging off the coast of Africa. This is actually an old wave that came off at a pretty high latitude, got ejected northward. And then we have some other waves down here in the intertropical convergence zone. None of these really pose any substantial threat of development over the next couple of days as these generally move westward. So all is pretty quiet for there. For Orlando, Florida, the forecast today, generally speaking, 93 degrees with a low of 75, 60% chance of showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon. South-southeast wind about 10 miles per hour. And for the evening forecast, again, we are looking at a 60% chance of showers and thunderstorms mainly before 8 p.m. this evening. Again, south-southeast wind at 10 miles per hour. If you guys want to see a local forecast for your specific area, make sure to drop that in the, in the comment section down below. And I'll be sure to create a custom forecast for you as this will be changing every single day. So make sure and you'll have a chance to be featured in tomorrow's video. Looking at the deep tropics in the East Pacific Basin, we have Tropical Storm Frank again today. The maximum sustained winds are about 40 miles per hour, and it is located about 12.4 north and 105.9 degrees west. Forecast peak still forecasted to be a high-end Category 1 hurricane with sustained winds of 85 miles per hour. We can see, though, that the overall storm structure is still struggling today with the low-level circulation still displaced uh, from the vast amount of convection to the south of it. That is because we have some wind shear being impinged on the storm still. Now, again, the current Hurricane Center forecast does have this uh, kind of becoming a hurricane by Saturday as it moves off towards the north and west here. Now, there's also a new tropical system also as well. It is kind of a bit hard to see, but this is the tropical system over here. This is Tropical Depression 8E, and this is expected to become a tropical storm as it kind of moves around in the southwesterly direction before kind of getting entangled uh, then with Frank as it passes by. So this will kind of be a Fujiwari effect here. Uh, but generally speaking, this also, none of these storms really pose any significant concern to land at this time, which is certainly some good news at that. Now, for the, which states could be affected this year? Well, here's a graphic showing that. Again, generally speaking, we've been talking about this over the past couple of days, but looking at it more in detail and the reasons behind it. So in the Caribbean, again, we have that very high risk. This indicates a 9 out of 10 chance of seeing tropical cyclone impacts within a 25-mile radius of a given point. So this could be from a tropical storm, this could be from a hurricane, or this could be from a major hurricane, okay? So generally speaking, this has a very substantial indicator that this is basically pointing out the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico are in some pretty serious trouble this year. Now, not saying that there's going to be a, a major, you know, hurricane anywhere, but this basically goes to show that, again, the Caribbean, especially the island chain down here, Trinidad, Tobago, Barbados, Puerto Rico, the U.S. British Virgin Islands, Cuba, the Dominican Republic, you know, uh, places like Jamaica, Cancun, places like that, even Florida and parts of the Bahamas, the far western portions of the Bahamas, have a very substantial risk of seeing tropical cyclone impacts this year. And then in the Gulf of Mexico, while there's not as high of a potential, I think there's even higher potential for seeing a major hurricane impacting that area. So we're talking about a Category 3 hurricane or higher potentially impacting portions of the Gulf Coast states here. So this includes anywhere from the Florida Panhandle all the way through Texas. It is possible that we see a major hurricane impact this year. And so certainly you need to be doing something with this information and that's something should be your hurricane preparedness plans, getting that ready to go. Of course, we still have a long way to go in the hurricane season. And while we may have fewer storms this year, we may have an overall higher impact this year, given the steering patterns and given the overall dynamics that look to be in place for later on in the season. So this is a warning 
to prepare now for what could be coming later. Hopefully, this forecast does not pan out, though. Well, is anything coming down the forecast pipeline over the next couple of days? Well, this is the GFS forecast, the 6 run valid uh, for 2 a.m. this morning. We look here in the overall forecast pattern. There is absolutely nothing to worry about for the next couple of days. It looks to be pretty quiet across the basin, but there is some signs that things are going to begin to pick up. So let's go ahead and jump into that. This is the European forecast here. We're looking at the 200 millibar wind pattern, but we'll jump to the precipitable water anomalies here. So this is looking at the departures from average. Do we have dry air or do we have moist air in the atmosphere? Well, this is the European ensemble forecast. We'll run this out uh, in a little bit of time here. So this is valid for July 30th within 78 hours from now. Uh, generally speaking, we have some pretty dry air across the main development region expected for the next couple of days. And again, that kind of persists for a while. We noticed that we have some pretty dry air coming off uh, from Europe here, and that's kind of dipping southwestward into the tropical Atlantic. And so development at this time is not really expected across the main development region, at least for the next couple of days into the first couple of days of August. Now, after this time, though, August begins to flip around and you kind of notice what begins to happen. Instead of having these dry air intrusions that come in, that dry air kind of gets cut off and then we end up with seeing pretty moist, a pretty moist atmosphere across the main development region uh, beginning really from about August 7th and then continuing in through August 11th here at the end of the forecast pattern or forecast period. So basically what this pattern tells me is that we're going to have a more amplified pattern of tropical waves coming off the coast of Africa and there's overall more moisture to work with and the potential for more tropical cyclones to develop at this time. If we actually kind of look at the 850 millibar vorticity, this kind of gives us uh, the look at what winds are doing, uh, not only cyclonically uh, vert with vertical extent, but we're also looking at the wind here, the kind of the surface reflection at about 5,000 feet. And we notice that well, what do we have here? Well, generally speaking in the low levels, we have a lot of westerly wind. And this is going to be good for increasing deep tropics warming here. And that increases the background cyclonic vorticity within that region. And if we jump up to the 800 or jump up to the 200 millibar wind. Uh, so this is wind at about 39,000 feet. We notice that the streamlines are generally speaking uh, really from west to east oriented or really from east to west oriented, however you really want to look at it. And so this kind of basically just describes that we kind of have you know, generally a uniform wind pattern, background cyclonic vorticity, and it really actually goes to increase the potential for tropical cyclones to be forming out in this region once we get through about uh, August 10th or so. So honestly, I, I'm beginning to think that we may have at least one or two named storms uh, within August, maybe even three named storms uh, by the end of August, and we could have the potential for a major hurricane in August Kind of a big factor in this as well is that over the next couple of days, we're looking at the velocity potential um, here. And what we're really looking for is that we have all of this upward moving air that's currently centered over the East Atlantic right now. And so this is going to be helping to favor increased tropical wave activity, stronger tropical waves and increased activity over Africa uh, as we progress through the next couple of days. Generally speaking, the atmosphere takes about one to three days um, kind of varies, but it takes about one to three days uh, for this upward moving air to actually have a transversible effect and a, a kind of, you can see it um, within about one to three days that it starts to have that effect. So all this upward moving air is going to contribute to an increase in tropical wave activity over the next couple of days. And we'll have to see how that contributes to the rest of the month of July and then going really in through about the first two weeks of August. Will we have increased activity? It certainly seems like everything is starting to come in line for that, all right? So again, the bottom line here is generally speaking for this year in particular, there is a enhanced, a, a more substantial risk of seeing tropical cyclone impacts to portions of the Caribbean, the islands, and of course, Florida and portions of the Gulf Coast states. And uh, obviously even that threat is pretty relatable all the way up the Eastern seaboard as well with even a 50% chance of seeing impacts all the way up to Massachusetts. So it's certainly not out of the realm of possibility to see some Northeast systems this year. And of course, I'll be chasing. So if you do want to, you know, see us chase, you know, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. 
and uh, follow for more amazing content there. All right. So that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.